So today is going to be kind of a, uh, a random grouping of stuff, and one of the things that you'll get to see is uh, why I set up things the way I do uh, for a workflow perspective, uh, such as having the giant clam holder uh, game object and then having the giant clam uh, f basically under it as as the scene file that I brought in. <coughs> so I'm going to go ahead and set up a few things first uh, so that we can then see the benefit of the way it's set up. Alright, I'm going to need to open the clam, giant clam setup script. Um, and what I need to do is add some colliders in here. And <clears throat> decide where I need them and on uh, basically what type of collider it needs to be, that sort of thing. So root that's pretty nice and centered right inside the character. I'm going to go add a physics component. Let's see, add a capsule. And it's kind of hard to see, so let me go back to wireframe. Alright, I'm going to set the axis to be X. And then I'm going to make it bigger. And let's go ahead and <clears throat> go in something like this. So the height, we'll just round that off with 2.2 or so, and then on the radius, um, let's see, it's okay for it to be a little bigger because the uh, the character does open and close and such, and um, you know while that in it's a little bit larger than the character when it's completely closed. Uh, when it, you know it's going to be chomping and doing all kinds of animations and stuff, and I might actually animate the scale and such of the the capsule changing over time uh, to basically sync up with the animations themselves. Okay, <clears throat> so the root has a capsule collider, and then for sending damage, uh, I have a couple options. I can create another capsule uh, collider. Uh, somewhere out in front of it, and then use that as a trigger to send damage with. And I'm thinking that I would probably want to do that on the tongue. I could just put it in front here and then just activate it, but that'll be less accurate than if I tried uh, putting it somewhere in here. And I'm not sure if a joint 10 is one of the joints that actually scales. So what I can do, because what I want to happen is I want the uh, the capsule collider I'm going to put on the tongue to scale along with the bones of the tongue. Um, so I should just be able to drag, grab this and say, uh, let's see, actually I don't even need to do that. I should be able to go in here and see what bones scale on the tongue. So we've got 9, 10, and 11. Um, so it does look like bone 10 is a good spot to put the uh, another collider. So I go in here, put a capsule collider, and let me... So let's see... It can be a little thinner on the radius and I want it also to be on the x-axis. Mm, let's go to the front view. It can be a little taller. Something... Let's just try it at 1.2. Okay. And I'm actually thinking that maybe that should be a little a little farther in front here, maybe on joint 11. So I'm going to copy this component. I'm going to paste uh, component is new. That looks that looks better than me, uh, and that still works as a joint that gets scaled. <coughs> uh, so I can remove that component, go to this one. And I actually want to scale it a little bit larger on the radius, um, you know, just so it gets toward the tip of the tongue. Let's see, 0 0.4, 0 0.45. We'll just, we'll leave it there for now. Uh, all that can be tweaked later, and really what I'm wanting to show as far as the whole workflow thing 
uh, this isn't terribly important. But I do need to know that uh, that is skeleton joint 11. Um, so I'm going to bring this up and uh, giant clamp setup and close. Uh, go ahead and let's see. I'll keep the crab set up. <coughs> Eel. Can get rid of this sort of stuff in here. Um, I'm going to keep some of the crab stuff around because this character is most similar to the crab. And this probably wants to be in the uh, namespace. It's fine. Go ahead there. Um, now I need to basically get some some variables in here. And if we look at like the crab setup, let's go ahead and scroll up here to the top. References to objects I need for FSMs and scripts and such. Uh, so we have a, a collider array. Um, C in here. Toggle references to scripts. That's not really important. Uh, game objects with skin mesh renderers. That's the sort of stuff I'm going to need. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and paste it in here. Um, and I don't need uh, the RVO and everything right now. I'm just going to go ahead and hide that so it'll leave me alone. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave this alone. Alright, and I am going to need like system.collections.generic and I might as well throw pathfinding and RVO and stuff because if it's being used in the crab setup, uh, odds are I'm going to end up using it here at some point. Okay, so <clears throat> Playmaker FSMs uh, definitely do need this one. The movement and the, uh, the take damage FSMs I'm going to need. Um, so I'm just going to create up top, uh, you know, what I'm going to keep. And so blue, I don't need that. It's not a blue crab. Uh, jumping, jump probability, um, really all this kind of stuff uh, I'm just going to get rid of. And references to game objects I need. Um, I can go ahead, at the moment I don't have anything in the FSMs, uh, so I, um, I do have a rig and a root game object, uh, so I'll probably need to use, well I definitely will need to use those. Um, the animator I'm going to need, I'll go ahead and keep the player, the rotation game object, item hold locators, uh, this character isn't going to be able to hold locators. Um, and then you see I have like a sphere collider, or, or a sphere trigger on holder, collider on holder, uh, that sort of thing. So what I would want to do would be to create like a private, um, I'm using capsule colliders at the moment. Capsule collider and call this um, like capsule on holder. Uh, just so I know where it is. Collider on holder. Might be a bit of a long name, but that sort of thing helps me. Uh, you know, at a glance, know what this is. It's a collider, it's not a trigger. Um, and it's on the holder. So I can go in here and duplicate this and say capsule collider. Um, it's not a cl this one won't be a collider. This one will be a trigger. I'll just call it tongue, because I don't need to know. Uh, exactly which you know bone and everything that's on right here and what was that tongue yeah it's not used so shoulder colliders uh, the collider array I'm gonna go ahead and keep that at the moment actually I don't think I need it because I'd, I don't think I'm gonna have a collider array all right references to scripts um, well, Flash Handler is a script that does exist on this character. Uh, toggle Collider, don't need that. The Arm Drop, I don't need that. Crab Animator Bull Manager, I have a giant Clam Animator Bull Manager. And so I can just go in here and rename this Clam Animator Bull Manager. Uh, collision Trigger Handler, don't need that. Crab Ragdoll, nope. Uh, random Chance, I might need this. Uh, so, hmm, that's probably a good thing to keep around. 
crab radar, I don't need that. Um, <clears throat> what I have is a clam, not a glam, glam, clam, clam radar. Same thing, just go ahead and rename this to clam. Okay, uh, script crab punch. I should have a clam punch. And you see how this is all just kind of working out that. Uh, a lot of these are similar items uh, for this different character. Let's see, so the RVO controller. I do have an RVO controller um, on the character. Rich AI crab, crab pickup. I don't have a crab pickup, but I am going to have a clam pickup. Right there. Script, make this clam pickup again. And pick up. And so for the rich AI crab here, this will be rich AI clam. And I'm not sure if I created. Alright, I have not created that one yet. So let me go create this. And I could do that in Visual Studio, but whatever. Rich AI clam. Ah, I do have one. Rich AI, rich AI giant clam. <clears throat> so let me just lay, wait for this to finish loading and whatever this the script I just made. So now that that's done, I can delete it. Yay! All right, rich AI giant clam. Reload. Yep, that's fine. Rich AI giant clam. Script rich AI clam. And clam pickup. I'm gonna need that. The siblings don't think are needed. Yeah, I've gotten rid of those, the seeker and stuff. Yep, so. Okay, the game object with skin mesh renderers. So I'm gonna have a clam body. And that's actually all. All I have is the clam body because the tongue is on the body. It doesn't have eyeballs or arms or any of that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to leave this list of renderers because I might need it. Uh, we'll see. And shadow caster. Um, so in in my game, you'll see that, like, say if I'm on this screen here, you'll see that uh, the clam is casting a real time shadow. Whereas the, um, okay, Rich AI Clam, I just gotta go get rid of this. And you're still causing a problem. Yeah, it's gone. I've, oh, I haven't saved it. There we go. Um, whereas you'll see that uh, PJ is not casting a shadow. Um, and you see that it's glitching on and off, but whatever and they aren't casting shadows or anything. That's because I'm actually using render textures to cast my shadows uh, so that I have more control over things. Um, yeah, anyway. So, ah, come on. Reload, reload. So that's where I have my shadow caster and the shadow caster projector and stuff, which are game objects that um, will be created at runtime. Um, the eye target, I don't need an eye target. Um, the look at me thing, that's basically when PJ is coming up uh, against the the character, like fighting it. Um, where is he going to look at the character? And so based on the character, I'd want him to look at, you know, at a different spot. And I don't always want him like looking at the character's feet, and it just looks awkward. Um, so I'll, I'll have a locator somewhere on the character that PJ will look at. Okay, and if you look at crab setup here, I use awake for the initialization um, of stuff on here. Uh, so for at the moment though, uh, just to show the workflow thing, I've mentioned a couple times now. Um, some, um, I'm going to go ahead and set up the capsule collider on holder. Now if you look 
hit the stuff in here, you'll see like the box collider on holder. And if I find usages and set up, uh, no, where to go? Find usages. Yeah, I don't want you there. Hold on. Da, da, da. Problems of trying to use one screen. All right. So here I get the component on the holder because it's, you know, it's on the holder. Anything that's already on the holder, I don't really need to worry about. Um, so maybe, all right. So this is going to come into play shortly here then. So the, I'm going to change this to awake. I'm going to use that for initial, initialization. All right, capsule collider on holder is get component uh, capsule collider because we are on the holder. This script, the setup script, is on the holder. Um, but this one, the the tongue, is a, a little more difficult. Um, so what I want to do is say I need to get these roots, the root and the rig. Um, so Let's see the the rig is going to be I uh, transform dot find and let's go see where it is. So if this is on the giant clam, it's just going to be one down at rig. Um, so yeah. Oh, actually, this is on the holder. So one down to giant clam. Come on, I know you're updating something. One down to giant clam, and then one more down to rig. So find giant clam, then then find rig, uh, and we'll do game object. So now we have a reference to the rig game object, and root is going to be rig. Uh, come on. rig dot transform dot find so I'm just going to be finding from the rig transform instead of instead of looking from the top uh, and all I have to do is go down one and find root okay easy enough there's root dot game object all right now I also need the um, the tongue tongue bone with trigger, basically. So I'll say tongue bone with trigger. And this will be assigned uh, root dot transform dot find. And let's see. So we have root. Uh, we'll go down to subroot tongue root tongue and let's see let's see if I can get this on here do, 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 do. okay so transform not find from root we are going to find sub root then tongue root Oop. tongue root tongue uh, tongue um, and then in the interest of not uh, having to type all those out I'm going to go down to skeleton joint 11 alright so in here we'll do this 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 so six, seven, eight, nine, uh, do, 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 ten, and eleven. All right. So now that I have the the one where the capsule collider is going to be, what I want to do, get this back over here. Um, I want to say capsule trigger on tongue. 
that's going to be assigned I um, a tongue tongue uh, bone with trigger dot add component capsule collider so in one line here I'm adding the commo adding the capsule the capsule trigger capsule collider component um, to the bone that's going to have it as a trigger and I'm assigning that to the uh, variable here okay now then I can go and say for this trigger uh, I want to say is trigger is true and then I want to say uh, the radius is assigned uh, 0.45f and then that the height that height is assigned 1.2f and lastly the direction is assigned uh, 0 Uh, because the direction is X, Y, Z, uh, 0, 1, 2, I believe. Um, I can... So uh, that should be the X direction. Because it's 0 based instead of 1, 2, 3. And basically what this does is this is will, at runtime, create this component. So now I can remove that component I'm going to save this for now and I'm going to go check let this update see I have this joint selected and I'm gonna hit play and see that see if this actually you know shows it and then I can move on into showing as to why this is a very good thing to do for a workflow from a workflow perspective okay so hit play do so there's my capsule collider x-axis 1.2.45 everything's all good um, you'll see these null reference stuff here that has nothing to do with what I'm doing right now it just has to do with things like the game manager and the camera and all that kind of stuff that is created in an earlier scene and uh, persists through the game but since I'm not starting from that screen it, it throws up nulls okay so now that I have this being created directly from code what that means is that, let's say, uh, on this, this clam, I need more animations. Let's say I forgot some. Like, say, um, you can grab crabs, and I think, okay, maybe I should have a, a grabbed animation for him, and I currently don't have an animation for him being hit, for the crab, or for the clam actually being hit. So, having this set up this way means that if I were to go into Unity and take this giant clam uh, basically model file and delete it, I don't have to worry about having like all this stuff set up on all these different bones and d different stuff going on and having to come back and redo all that work because it's handled by a script that's on the, the parent object. So I can swap out this game object as many times as I want to and I don't have to rebuild any of that. Um, so that's that's helped me quite a bit. There is a problem with the animator though. Um, with an animator controller, you will lose the uh, the links to the animations in the file, but the graph and everything in the animator controller will be set up. You know, it'll still be there. You'll just have to drag and drop the new animations in. It's it's not a big deal. Um, kind of tedious. I wish I could. Uh, easily deal with that but for now actually though I do need to go in here and I should let's see um, I was going to add I guess just a grabbed and a and a hit a hit animation so go over to animate I'm gonna save this and this shouldn't take very long save this as scene 17 and go over to the groups giant clam uh, actions so for a 
for being grabbed. Let's let's kind of see what I have here. Lick loop, no, item, idle, Nash, closed. Idle. Okay. You know, so idle, he kind of... Hold on. Let me see. Starts up, goes down, and just comes up. Alright, so I actually also want to go ahead and um, edit this a little bit because I don't want it to simply come up. I don't want it to simply stop here at frame 16. So, ah, uh, yeah, that's right. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> I thought I had had set it up correctly. It's because uh, the frame range here was too short. And I was just seeing that it was only doing half the motion. Okay. So let's go ahead and duplicate idle. I guess I need to drop that. Okay, select this, select this. There we go. Duplicate. And I'm going to rename this to grabbed. And then go over here to grabbed. And we should see that he's moving back and forth. Uh, so what I want to do is uh, a few things. I want to have the top open. Uh, you know maybe something like 33 and then I want to have the tongue let's see the tongue scale I'm gonna have his tongue out and the tongue tip scale so this is basically it'll be that PJ has grabbed his tongue and I'm gonna go ahead and change the lick the uh, lick let's see it's too far, maybe maybe something like that. And tongue scale. I might ah oh, come on. Might want to make the mmm that's getting kind of bad. Let's see, maybe twelve. I might I could probably get away with twelve. Uh just trying to make the, the tip of the tongue there look a little a little more obviously large. And I'll just leave it like that. And, you know, I might have to come in here and tweak it, but whatever. That's fine for now. Shell top is there. Look vertical. Is that these keyframes are not going to be carried through. Um, so let's see the shell top. Uh, shell top. I'll just do a little bit of copy and paste. I'm sure there's a a faster way, but this won't take long. So I want the tongue to be large like this, like vertical. And then uh, I'm going to get to try and mess around um, with having the tongue twist as the character moves left and right to try and give it you know a little bit of an illusion that it's um, staying in one spot. Like he's being held by his tongue. Okay. Tongue tip scale. I'm going to set this. Zero and zero. And zero. And zero. All right, so let's see what we have so far. If I play it, you see rocks back and forth. It's all pretty pretty stiff looking. I'm going to save it. And so let's see. From here on to the side here, let's try a lick horizontal. And let me do... Uh, back. So if I go from here, uh, the bone is basically aligned with the z-axis. Um, so I would want to try getting it sort of back to the z-axis. So that's it too. And maybe, you know, maybe it twists. Like he's trying to twist away. 
So the lick twist, uh, try 6.2. Let's see what that does in here. And then let's go to here and try the lick twist at a negative 6.2. And then, and then, no and then. Let's see, lick vertical, lick horizontal is 2. We'll do negative 2. All right. Let's see how how this goes. All right, so that looks a little better. Um, you know, like he's kind of trying to to wiggle his way off of something. Now we can still add like a little bit of a little bit more motion. Like maybe here, uh, it could be a little more open. Ooh, actually. If I'm gonna open, if I'm gonna change this, it, it's gonna the tongue's gonna follow along, and I don't want to mess with the twist value. So what I could do is go in here and add, say, five degrees to this, bring that up to eight, and then on the shell bottom, add five degrees to that, and that should keep it, uh, you know, roughly in the same spot. So if I go from this frame to this frame, yeah, it's in the same spot. Um, and we'll do the same same thing here. Shell bottom, we'll give this 5, and then set this to 38. So what this will do is we'll give us a little bit of, uh, you know, more of a squirmy animation, because the, the bottom jaw is moving, the top jaw is moving. Um, yeah, he looks kind of like he's being held by his tongue. And we'll stop this, save it. So, need one more, so it was grabbed, and we need something for being hit. So, being hit. This is going to be a pose. It doesn't need to be a looping animation like what I just did. Closed, chomp. Let's see, what is this? Chomp. Ah, okay. So stop, up, down. And basically what I'd be looking for here is just something like this, that pose right there. So maybe something like a, the punch. And actually, I'm just going to go with closed. It's easy enough. Duplicate this, rename this to, what was it again? It's not grabbed, it's um, been hit. Been hit. And we'll change over to been hit. Okay, so we'll grab the controls now. And let's see, I want to rotate it. Now let's go to zero, four, these are keyframed. I want to rotate the root on X. Just back a bit. Mm, we'll just give it 20. Root X here, we'll give this 20 as well. And we'll do the shell top. Not open, not open a lot. Just kind of, uh, kind of there. And we'll bring the tongue down a little bit. Or no, I actually want to bring the, the bring the tongue up. Bring the tongue up. And we'll kind of scale it some. Maybe something like that. And so let's see, vertical, uh, 16.6. And I'm just going to act, uh, yeah, all I need to do is copy and paste the entire keyframe. And we can consider that the, the hit animation. Now, one thing I do want to do, all right, so these are the same frame, so I don't need to mess with it. Although on idle, I think I changed some stuff. So to make sure all of this is linear, all of these keyframes are linear interpolation, and then the same thing for grabbed. 
Uh, I want to just go in and make sure everything's linear. And that's me being dumb. I didn't actually change it down here to grabbed. <laughs> all right, select this. There we are. That's all we need to do. Save it. And I'm going to export this as the FBX. Save this. Uh, save, 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 save. Close it. And we should be good to go. So bring up Unity. I'm going to delete Giant Clam here. And I'm losing the prefab connection. Sure. Uh, so I'm going to go over to my resources, models, and find my giant clam. So really all I did on this was um, scale the model up a bit and some of the animations I made them loop. And that's all I'm going to lose. So delete clam. Come over here. Uh, do, 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 do. Giant clam here. Models. Okay. Giant clam, giant clam. There we are. Uh, animations, I'm going to go ahead and scale the model, double that in size real quick. Applied animations. Bin hit is a pose item, so chomp would only play once. Uh, projectile is going to be once. Item, lick loop, it's called a loop, needs to be a loop. Nash is going to be a loop. Uh, lick spin should loop. Punch should not, idle should loop, grab should loop, and we'll apply those. Drag this under giant clam holder. Um, I guess the other thing I should have mentioned is that I'm gonna I will lose the material assignment here. Not terribly difficult. Go in and fix that. Um, so now though, let's see if I go down to rig root. Uh, all the way down in here and find uh, the skeleton joint 11. If I pause this and hit play, I should see that even though I deleted it and brought in a completely different file, this still works. So it's way better to set up your characters uh, using scripts. You know, set it up in the game view, uh, you know, just manually the first time, and then go through and put in your script every single thing that you need, so that you can make you can iterate on the file uh, of the character all you need to, uh, without breaking the entity in the game. And now I should just be able to go this and hit apply, and this is back to being my giant clam holder. Uh, the prefab has been relinked. Uh, do, 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 giant A, C, F, G. So there's only one here. Giant clam motor, right? All right. And I think even go over to my models and giant clam, giant clam. Should be able to click on an animation like the lick spin. Oh, I went off the wrong side of the screen and just see how that's, you know, looking. Okay, so what are we doing now? We've got animations in. Um, I've s just saved that scene. The setup here is saved with this capsule collider. And I really, this kind of thing really annoys me. Uh, I know, I guess, for streaming like this, it can be nice to have it all wrapped down like that. But I typically work, um, you know, on well. I guess it's a vertical monitor anyway, and that gets trimmed off. But I just don't like it wrapping with like four lines instead of one. Okay, so rig root uh, bones. So basically, those are all bones. Uh, then these are colliders. Um, the player game object, I don't really need to think about that right now. So the rotation game object, um, that's kind of an interesting one because it could be any number of things. It just depends on what I end up doing with the character. Uh, so the giant clam holder itself uh, will obviously rotate. 
Uh, but And then I have the rig, which is at the feet, so that's essentially the same thing as the rig holder. And then... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, then I have like the root, um, but really I think the rotation game object is probably going to be the rig in this case. If I go over to crab setup and just say find what's the rotation, and really I should just be able to do control F here. Rotation game object uh, is is the crab dot game object if I'm looking at a crab. Um, so it would just be the rotation object, it would be the clam itself. Um, that would be the rotation game object, is how I currently have it set up. Uh, which, would, which would allow me to rotate the clam um, while it's being deformed by this stuff. So that should be how I should set that up. So I'm going to say the rotation game object um, is going to be from that find giant clam dot game object. Um, then I can do just some script assignment. So like any of this stuff, uh, all this stuff needs to be assigned. Uh, the flash handler is assigned uh, get component flash handler and I can copy and paste oh, sorry I didn't notice uh, um, that I had comments so how the hell do you come up with a game idea like the one in your description <laughs> uh, lost Atlantis prawn star okay if you haven't seen it, um, you know the people behind the um, Exploding Kittens card game that's really big on, uh, what is it, Kickstarter right now. They also do web comics and stuff, uh, and one of the web comics was Why the Mantis Shrimp is My New Favorite Animal. And basically, after reading that, my wife and I decided, hey, you know, it would be really cool to make a game where a mantis shrimp is the um, main character. And it was originally more realistic, and then I decided I want to go more of a, a Super Mario route. Um, so if you think, and you go read that webcomic, and then um, consider that image one for the game. Then image two for the game would be Ron Mario. If you want to go look at that up, it can disturb some viewers. It's, it's basically Ron Jeremy dressed up as Mario. Um, so those things kind of combined and then with you know like a visual style of Super Mario and some of the gameplay elements uh, from Super Mario 3D World and Donkey Kong Country series and that kind of stuff is where this has come from. Um, and so you're downloading Nudy, N Unity and needed to restart my internet. Okay, I can just restart now. Chrome. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. So. Hold on, gonna take a drink. <sighs> so, okay. I guess I will get back to this. Hopefully you uh, heard the explanation. Now you had to restart your internet. If not, the video uh, will be on uh, Twitch and then on YouTube and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, it has come together over uh, the past two years, basically. Um, and I'm hoping to be at PAX Prime, so uh, around that sort of time, I guess around the time for the Andy Megabooth subscription, which should be in April. So around mid-April, I'll probably do a, a stream where all I do is play my game, because I'll have... Uh, you know, a, a level in each overworld by then and some other stuff going on. Okay. So let's see where I'm at right now. Scripts. Uh, yes. So just copy, paste, paste, paste. Uh, let's see here. The Clam Animator Bull Manager. 
and do to do, do animator bull manager random chance is not actually a script I have on here yet um, but I will add it clam radar oops wrong spot giant clam radar restart my internet way before yep cool good working out for two years yes yes I have um, this I quit my day job in April of last year um, to work on it full time. Before that, I was working on it, you know, uh, burning the midnight midnight uh, hours, as as people say. And um, it's my first game. This is the first thing, first game I've programmed. Um, but I've spent a great many years acquiring hardware, software, and skills, and doing training and all that sort of stuff to be able to do this by myself. Looks nice, like the graphics. At first I was like, how is that crab green? Brothers, reading the webcomic. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and you can see some of my crab characters over here uh, that you get to fight with. And you can break their arms off and then beat them with their arms. Or they can pick up the arm and beat you with it or throw it at you. Um, you know, as as the mantis shrimp does. You can even pick up the... Uh, after, if you break off both arms by chance, you can then pick up the crab itself as an item and throw it. Uh, yeah, so I did take a very risky shot quitting my day job for it, but um, a couple things with that. One, I'm married, so I'm on wife support, uh, so that's very helpful. Um, <laughs> and then two, is that even if it doesn't, you know, allow me to have my own game studio and, you know, make more games and all that kind of stuff, it's still a, um amazing accomplishment, and, you know, if I had to get another day job... Um, I'd basically be like, here is my resume, go download it from Steam. <laughs> like, go go play my game, and... So I, I think that would that would help my, my chances. Giant Clam Punch. Punch. RVO Controller. Uh, Oops. Yeah, that was wrong. RVO Controller. Um, clam. Now I'm kind of curious why that one script our view controller. Yeah, our view controller. Interesting. So this one. Yes. What about this one? Find usage. Yeah. Okay. Not really sure why that one's not. Ah, because it's public. Yeah, like that doesn't matter. Wife support. Hey, it's true. So when he kills a boss, I don't scream one, two, three, death. Three. Yes. Um, I don't know if there's going to be voice acting. I approached someone at PAX, what's uh, PAX South, um, you know, this year uh, about doing it. Um, Nate wants to battle. I think is the guy's name. Um, on Twitter, uh, you know, because he was doing like a voice acting. Um, well, he had a panel and he talked about doing voice acting and stuff, and it seemed like he would work pretty well for Pron Jeremy. Um, but depending on th how things go, you know, voice acting for the first game at least is likely to be out of scope. We'll see. I would like there to be voice acting as well. Um, but I would like there to be a lot of things and at some point in time I have to ship the game right so uh, it's just kind of a constant constant evaluation process to see how things are going um, and what I can afford to do so
Oh uh, yeah, cool. So you know him. Uh, yeah, actually, I talked to him, and he said that uh, he was interested. I gave him a card, and then uh, after PAX, I tweeted at him once, reminding him I probably need to try a little harder, uh, and I will. Um, I just wanted to have more to show him, like you know, once I do an indie mega booth submission, uh, especially if I could say like, oh yeah, I'm. Uh, going to be at PAX Prime showing it and everything. You know, that might help. Uh, you don't seem as a voice actor. <laughs> um, well, he has done some voice acting, and he is... Uh, he can... My wife says he can pull off a Steve Buscemi voice, uh, which she thinks would be perfect. Um, so yeah, we'll, I'll, I'll try a little harder, uh, try to remind him, because I'm sure he gets tons and tons and tons and tons of, of tweet, you know, mentions and blah, 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 and just like me is, is just inundated with other things to, to deal with. Uh, wife support did pay for the business card. Wife supports paying for everything at the moment, but uh, it's okay because she had husband support for four years in New Zealand, so <laughs> it's it's just my turn now. Mm. Playmaker FSMs. Go ahead and assign this. And do FSMs, FSM, FSMs are assigned git components, uh, playmaker, oh wow, wow, bad typing, playmaker, FSM, mm. yeah, she's sitting right behind me, by the way, so, no, you're not hijacking at all. That's it's always good to have people talking. And we are talking about you, so movement FSM. Uh so now I'm gonna have to do a for each uh N FSMs for each FSM F the FSM dot name. Uh I hate how it does does that dot name. Um, or is it is it fsm dot name or fsm dot fsm name? Let's see. Ah, uh, movement fsm. Get you right up there. fsm dot fsm name. Okay. Well, I might as well just take this in here. Take damage and movement. Go ahead. Two years is going to be her turn again. Uh, we'll have to see. I'm hoping that, you know, this game will be out, uh, hopefully, at the end of this year. So that'll put me at around two and a half years. But, um, well, I guess in two years, you, she wants to spend like a year in Japan. So, And she also does her own things, even right now. She's behind me writing novels. Um, and I need to put I should probably put links up to all of the books that she independently publishes because she does pretty much some of everything. But yeah, it's just kind of a constant uh, evaluation thing. You know, if in two more years it turns out that like one of us has a really amazing job um, and th the other one can work on their own stuff, I don't really care which one of us it is. It just, you know, it just comes down to uh, what's the best for us. So I've got the FSM array, I've got the rig, the root, tongue holder, animator. I do not have the animator component. So, let's see. The animator is going to be get component animator. But I think the animator, let me go see here. The animator is on giant clam, yes. So it needs to be I'm not going to use, even though I could use the rotation object, 
in case I change the rotation object, um, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Go ahead and find it again. Um, this sort of stuff, the rig, the root, and bone stuff, the bone hierarchy should not change. So I do want this stuff to break if I change the bone hierarchy because I want to know about it. Um, but the rotation object is just something I'm going to use for a code here and there. Um, and I don't want uh, the animator to be dependent on that object being correct or being a specific sort of thing. All right, animator, player game object. Do I even find the player here? I imagine I do a, I do find the player with a, a tag. Yep, easy enough. Just copy and paste. Sometimes this can burn you. <laughs> copy and paste, but uh, I'm trying to keep everything named. You know, anything I'm going to be copy and paste is named the same. Um, capsule holder. Yep. Uh, so RVO controller, the, the clam body mesh um, needs to be under. And really, I don't even have a whole lot of a whole lot of stuff here to worry about. We'll get. We'll do a transform dot find, and it's going to be. Giant clam, giant clam, giant clam will be the the way to go. Giant clam slash giant clam. That game object is the clam body, and so the shadow caster and the shadow caster projector. So these are things that I'm going to have to instantiate. And just to make sure that um, I'm doing it right, I'm going to go ahead and see what I did uh, as far as this. Let the projector handle shadow layers. And this is exactly... So I'm probably going to need to... And do I use the renderer list? Am I passing that in anywhere? No, okay, good. So I don't really need that right now. I'll... Probably, you know, I'm going to go ahead and add a list, even though there's only one renderer, because I know that I have other methods set up um, that take a list that that need this. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Um, and the renderers, it's just going to be the uh, the body, the clam body here, dot get component renderer, and that's going to be the only one. So whatever, that's fine. And projector match layers uh, passing in a new list of the clam body. That should be the only thing I need. And I can go over and see my implementation. It's been a little while since I I did this for each game object and match layers. Ah, yeah. So I, I changed the layer to match what the projector is. Um, and so the orthographic uh, sizes and stuff like this for the projectors, all that stuff, um, I'll have to just go in and and tweak it if it looks wrong. But now, if I go in here. And let's say the giant clam, I want to turn off cast shadows. Um, and now if I play this, it should instantiate a shadow caster object. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's thinking about the code. And be okay, so because of the null reference from needing to load from the title screen. Let's go ahead and load from the title screen then. Start. I'm going to go ahead and clear the slot. Start. And after that stuff loads, see, uh, PJ has a shadow, and so does the um, the clam. Uh, if you see, uh, if I get in the way of where the shadow is uh, being projected from, it uh, it's hitting me. 
which is something I don't want, and I'll have to deal with that separately. And I'm wondering if that might just be because this got turned back on somehow. Receive shadows and stuff, so no. I'll leave that alone for now. No offering genetically modified organisms on Kickstarter. Yeah, that's that's kind of interesting. I wonder why that's a rule. Because <laughs> uh, genetically modified organisms, well, de depending on the organism, I wonder what made them come up with that rule. That that would be entertaining to to know <laughs> who was trying to to sell what. But yeah, I, I guess um creating just leaving people open to create all kinds of crazy hybrids since science is getting to that point right now is probably not a good idea cuz I'm sure you've seen stuff where they have like what like a glow in the dark cat or something. I've seen I've seen some weird stuff where they they've mixed different DNA from different animals. Um so the same sort of thing where I go in here and find the renderer uh where I do something like shadows. So cast and receive shadows. I'll just do the same sort of thing. Uh and here Let's see, with the, once I get the renderer here, um, I'll just do cast shadows as false. I do want it to receive shadows. So that should be all good. Um, let's see. And yes, you're going to have to reload because I'm back here. Clam setup. Look at me, the look at me game object. I think that's sort of the last one on here that I haven't. So I'm going to need to So it's going to be instantiated from the resources, look at me, and I'm going to parent it to uh transform. And transform means this transform basically the current transform that this script is attached to and then I'm going to set its position and here it gets set to 1.56 and my character, the clam character is probably that's actually probably a good spot for it um, let's go in here and do something like this so PJ's two. I think I'm just going to put it at one. Mm, just put it at one. Er, no, I'll put it 1.5. Because PJ's two units tall, so he'd be looking about here at one. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put it at one. Okay, so for now, I think. It's going on an hour. Probably a good point to stop um, before moving into more stuff. So, unless um, there are any more questions, uh, I will go ahead and and sign off. Um, and also, you can follow me on you know Twitter and Facebook and all that sort of stuff to ask questions if you want to. And follow me here. That's always good. Following me on, find find me on all the social networks is helpful for me to have people interested. Mm -hmm. and I guess while I wait for. Wait a few seconds to see if there are questions. I'll go ahead and try playing. Did I change anything? I don't think I changed anything. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and run through my level a little bit. Uh, so if there aren't any questions, I'll just 
probably cut this cut this section. We'll see though. But yeah, I'll, oh, I will. I'll have a couple minutes. So you know, uh, still, uh, that's interesting. I'd have thought that uh, the collider would be stopping me. Mm, let's see here, giant clam holder. Do I, did I add the the collider to the wrong spot? Is that what it's trying to tell me? Okay. Really? Mm, yes, I added, I did not go back in on on root. Yeah, okay. That was my mistake. Uh, I guess that gives me something to fix. I have to fix that before I sign off. Giant clam setup. So I thought that the capsule collider, this says capsule collider on holder. Um, it's not on the holder. It's on the uh, root. On root is going to need to be root um, dot add component of capsule collider. Um, and then I need to do some settings here. I don't need to set the... Uh, I, I don't want to be a trigger. So the radius that I think I had was something like 0.45 and the height was like 2.2. The direction was X. Um, but then it also had an offset and this needs to be the root one here, not the tongue. That's where a copy and paste can kind of screw you. Let's do this and do the offset root dot um, the center is assigned a new vector three zero 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 point nine f I believe and save that. And let's see, wait a minute, no, no, I don't need to offset it because it's going to be on the root. Okay, let this load up. I'm going to select the root here. Double check my settings real quick. Come on, Unity, there we go. Uh, go with play and pause this for a second. Root, 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 wireframe, yeah, so the settings are not right. The radius needs to be like 0.8. Yep, yep, and good enough. Okay, so 0.8 is the only change I need to make. Go in here, point 0.8. Alright, and with that, um, thank you for watching. Have a good night. Be back tomorrow.